If you've been on Netflix this past month, you have undoubtedly seen the trailer for the Aaron Hernandez documentary, a story that pulls back the curtain on the mind of a murderer. It's called Killer Inside, the mind of Aaron Hernandez, and we are joined today by writer and executive producer Kevin Armstrong in studio. Thanks so much for doing all the research on this and really lifting the veil on this story because I feel like it's got to be so difficult to take a story that everybody's seen in the news and plant your flag in that and, and be able to reveal something new. I feel like most true crime dramas and documentaries focus on something that we haven't seen before or focus on the forensic mystery that's involved here. But this was really more of a deep dive into why he did it, the mentality of him. Was it difficult for you to find this balance between not assigning blame and not offering absolution? Yeah, we wanted to provide panoramic reporting. We wanted to take the viewer and really just show what happened from day one to the suicide that he committed, and even afterward, how the ripple effect still affected uh, people within his family, within the Patriots, within the NFL at large. And, uh, you know, it was a rich story from the beginning, and we wanted to make sure that everybody understood just how many twists and turns there were in it. Oh, it was. I mean, it was up and down, left and right, and and it was all factual. That's what's so amazing about this. Um, we know how TV stories are constructed and it usually needs a narrator to bridge the gap, to fill in the holes. You chose not to use a narrator and every voice that was heard was someone connected to this and move the story along. Was that tough to make that decision? Absolutely. I mean, stitching it together. Uh, Will Zidnadarek is one of our editors, and the weaving together to just let the action speak for themselves, whether it was archival videos, uh, phone calls that uh, Hernandez made in jail with any number of family members and or friends along the way, his agent, uh, those things all spoke volumes and really gave us unfiltered access that even a definitive interview, which was never given by Hernandez before he committed suicide, uh, wouldn't, wouldn't really have revealed to anybody. So when we were able to just get that archival footage, say him playing at Florida, as in high school even, mud caked, you know, there's an innocence there in his youth, and then to see what he became and, you know, hear his voice from in jail and prison, it's pretty striking for anybody to tune into. And the fact that you didn't use a narrator, did it allow you to, to take more of a neutral stance in this story, a journalistic endeavor, certainly, right? Absolutely. I mean, it's a cocktail that led him to commit murder and really be at multiple murder scenes, essentially, and to continue playing in the NFL and at a high level. I mean, this guy's catching a touchdown from Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. He wins a national championship with Tim Tebow and Urban Meyer in college. So this wasn't just a, a member of the NFL community. This was a star, and this was somebody who, along with Rob Gronkowski, really formed the greatest tight end duo to ever play in the NFL. So you take all of that he did in the public sphere, and then you try to understand what he was doing in his double life at his flop house and this private spaces that he uh, really inhabited, and you get a whole different picture of who he was. You were with the New York Daily News when he caught a touchdown in the Super Bowl. You talked to him after that Super Bowl, which occurred after he committed these murders. Does Was that difficult for you when you look back on that to, to remember that this is a man who was able to compartmentalize unlike maybe any other. Yeah, you know, I, I was in camp with a lot of other people who tried to reconcile the two uh, figures that were Aaron Hernandez, really probably three. You know, there was the guy who was going home to, he had a fiance and a, it was his first Father's Day as a father. Uh, when uh, the day after he committed uh, the murder of Odin Lloyd. And he eventually gets convicted of that. And, you know, that daughter, four years later, is in a courtroom, uh, you know, literally just showing up as he's coming down to the end of a, a, an acquittal for a double homicide. So yeah. to see that growth, and there were a lot of people, myself included, who knew him in one sense and then had to learn about the other Aaron Hernandez. And that's what we wanted to provide to the viewers. I think that's why it was so surprising. And I, I think one of the key turning points in his life was obviously when his father passed. Um, things happened with his mother. His mother certainly was not a stable foundation. She ended up welcoming in his cousin's husband who started living with them as well. Um, the irony is 
the escape of the NFL, which for most, most players does allow them to escape a bad situation, didn't work for Aaron because it was near where all of this was taking place. It was near his home. Do you think that that allowed him to maybe fall back into those circle of friends that led him down this path to destruction? Yeah, if anything, he courted the street life. He didn't need Alexander Bradley. He didn't need uh, Ernest Wallace or Carlos Ortiz, these guys from Bristol who either were petty criminals or, you know, involved with a, a certain amount of violence and drugs in their life. But he went down that route. And he wasn't hanging out with the Patriots. You know, a lot of guys would, you know, interact with him in the locker room. But, you know, whatever time, end time comes, 4 p.m., 5 p.m., you know, you he was going one way and they were going another. You know, they were recovering their bodies and whatnot. And he did, the thing that he did was he, he performed all the football tasks. You know, he passed the test that a demanding coach like Belichick, you know, makes of his players. Uh, you know, Robert Kraft was convinced, gave him a $40 million extension for five years. He, he was part of the Patriot culture on the field and in the building and then just completely turned the page when he left. You were navigating some pretty rough terrain, and you received some criticism, or I should say the documentary received some criticism for using uh, some phone conversations between him and his daughter for addressing things that were very touchy, like his sexuality, which is something that was left out of your inaugural film in 2018 that you revealed to the New York Film Festival. Was that important enough for you to have to put that into this documentary? Yeah, we wanted to be responsible reporting it along the way. And as incremental information came to us, we explored it and we looked at it. And that information it, was possibly in your hands in, in the 2018 version as well, though. It, not to that point in terms of uh, the Boston Globe did a report where they looked at uh, his high school quarterback who said he had a relationship with Aaron Hernandez. Mm. Uh, there were conversations that we had later on uh, with a lawyer uh, who represented Hernandez, and he said that, you know, sexuality was something that Aaron brought up as well. And even with Jose Baez, uh, you know, his books and just what he's put out there over the years, we've looked at all that information and absorbed it. And we found the most responsible way to, you know, have the conversations that he had that were public record on jailhouse uh, uh, phone calls right. and include that voice. And, you know, we, we just felt that if we were going to give our audience the full look at Aaron Hernandez, that was part of the equation. I will say it is eerie hearing his voice from the grave in some of those conversations. And if you want to hear any opinions on this documentary, all you have to do is just hop onto social media because everybody is sharing their thoughts. But we've heard very little from any of his Patriots teammates. Does that in itself almost shine a light into his interactions and the relationships he had in that Patriots locker room? Sure. It's part of the culture. Obviously, the Patriots are, you know, a tight lipped it comes from the top down. Belichick sets the tone. Belichick moved on the day they cut him. You'll never hear Belichick, other than the, an extensive uh, press conference that he gave shortly after Hernandez was arrested, there will never be public comment from Bill Belichick again, probably. Maybe not Bill Belichick. Do you think that we might hear from Tom Brady on this if he's no longer a member of the Patriots? It'll be interesting. You know, we reached out to guys who uh, moved on as well, Wes Welker, and, you know, nobody wanted to speak in terms of guys who may have been in the room or whatnot. Now, we spoke to guys off camera and, you know, certainly informed our view of what happened there and whatnot. But, to you know, that's a leap that, the Patriots, former Patriots, have not taken thus far is to put their thoughts on camera. Killer Inside the Mind of Aaron Hernandez can be seen on Netflix executive producer Kevin Armstrong. Thanks for doing all of the research on this and putting this together because it seems like this is something that everybody wanted to see. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you, Steve. All right. Stick around. We're back after this.